Length contraction is the phenomenon that a moving object's length is measured to be shorter than its proper length, which is the length as measured in the object's own rest frame. This contraction, also known as Lorentz contraction or Lorentz Fitzgerald contraction after Hendrik Lorentz and George Francis Fitzgerald, is usually only noticeable at a substantial fraction of the speed of light. Length contraction is only in the direction in which the body is traveling. For standard objects, this effect is negligible at everyday speeds, and can be ignored for all regular purposes, only becoming significant as the object approaches the speed of light relative to the observer. History Length contraction was postulated by George Fitzgerald and Hendrik Antoon Lorentz to explain the negative outcome of the Michelson–Morley experiment and to rescue the hypothesis of the stationary ether Lorentz -Fitzgerald contraction hypothesis. Although both Fitzgerald and Lorentz alluded to the fact that electrostatic fields in motion were deformed, heaviside ellipsoid. After Oliver Heaviside, who derived this deformation from electromagnetic theory in 1888, it was considered an ad hoc hypothesis, because at this time there was no sufficient reason to assume that intermolecular forces behave the same way as electromagnetic ones. In 1897 Joseph Larmor developed a model in which all forces are considered to be of electromagnetic origin, and length contraction appeared to be a direct consequence of this model. Yet it was shown by Henri Poincaré that electromagnetic forces alone cannot explain the electron's stability. So he had to introduce another ad hoc hypothesis, non-electric binding forces Poincaré stresses that ensure the electron's stability, give a dynamical explanation for length contraction, and thus hide the motion of the stationary ether. Eventually, Albert Einstein 1905 was the first to completely remove the ad hoc character from the contraction hypothesis, by demonstrating that this contraction did not require motion through a supposed ether, but could be explained using special relativity, which changed our notions of space, time, and simultaneously. Einstein's view was further elaborated by Hermann Minkowski, who demonstrated the geometrical interpretation of all relativistic effects by introducing his concept of four-dimensional spacetime. <laughs> <laughs> Basis in relativity First it is necessary to carefully consider the methods for measuring the lengths of resting and moving objects. Here, Object simply means a distance with endpoints that are always mutually at rest, i.e., that are at rest in the same inertial frame of reference. If the relative velocity between an observer or his measuring instruments and the observed object is zero, then the proper length L zero displaystyle L underscore zero of the object can simply be determined by directly superposing a measuring rod. However, if the relative velocity greater than zero, then one can proceed as follows. The observer installs a row of clocks that either are synchronized a by exchanging light signals according to the Poincaré-Einstein synchronization, or b by slow clock transport. That is, one clock is transported along the row of clocks in the limit of vanishing transport velocity. Now, when the synchronization process is finished, the object is moved along the clock row and every clock stores the exact time when the left or the right end of the object passes by. After that, the observer only has to look at the position of a clock A that stored the time when the left end of the object was passing by, and a clock B at which the right end of the object was passing by at the same time. It's clear that distance AB is equal to length L of the moving object. Using this method, the definition of simultaneity is crucial for measuring the length of moving objects. Another method is to use a clock indicating its proper time t 0 which is traveling from one endpoint of the rod to the other in time t as measured by clocks in the rod's rest frame. The length of the rod can be computed by multiplying its travel time by its velocity, thus L 0 equals T V displaystyle L underscore 0 equals T C D O T V in the rod's rest frame or L equals T 0 V 
Display style L equals T underscore zero C D O T V. In the clock's rest frame, in Newtonian mechanics, simultaneity and time duration are absolute, and therefore both methods lead to the equality of L. Display style L and L zero. Display style L underscore zero. Yet in relativity theory the constancy of light velocity in all inertial frames in connection with relativity of simultaneity and time dilation destroys this equality. In the first method an observer in one frame claims to have measured the object's endpoints simultaneously, but the observers in all other inertial frames will argue that the object's endpoints were not measured simultaneously. In the second method, times t and t Zero. Display style t underscore zero are not equal due to time dilation, resulting in different lengths too. The deviation between the measurements in all inertial frames is given by the formulas for Lorentz transformation and time dilation. See derivation. It turns out that the proper length remains unchanged and always denotes the greatest length of an object, and the length of the same object measured in another inertial reference frame is shorter than the proper length. This contraction only occurs along the line of motion and can be represented by the relation L equals L 0 gamma V display style L equals L underscore 0 gamma V where L is the length observed by an observer in motion relative to the object L 0 is the proper length the length of the object in its rest frame Gamma v is the Lorentz factor, defined as gamma v one one minus v two c two. Display style gamma v equiv frac one sqrt one v caret two c caret two, where v is the relative velocity between the observer and the moving object. C as the speed of light replacing the Lorentz factor in the original formula leads to the relation L equals L zero one minus V two C two Display style L equals L underscore zero SQRT one V carrot two C carrot two in this equation both L and L0 are measured parallel to the object's line of movement. For the observer in relative movement, the length of the object is measured by subtracting the simultaneously measured distances of both ends of the object. For more general conversions, see the Lorentz transformations. An observer at rest observing an object traveling very close to the speed of light would observe the length of the object in the direction of motion as very near zero. Then, at a speed of 13,400,000 m meters per second, 30 million miles per hour, 0.0447 c contracted length is 99.9% .9 of the length at rest. At a speed of 42,300,000 m meters per second, 95 million miles per hour, 0.141 c, the length is still 99%. As the magnitude of the velocity approaches the speed of light, the effect becomes prominent. Symmetry The principle of relativity according to which the laws of nature must assume the same form in all inertial reference frames requires that length contraction is symmetrical, if a rod rests in inertial frame S, it has its proper length in S and its length is contracted in S. However, if a rod rests in S, it has its proper length in S and its length is contracted in S. This can be vividly illustrated using symmetric Minkowski diagrams or Lodl diagrams because the Lorentz transformation geometrically corresponds to a rotation in four-dimensional spacetime. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Magnetic forces. Magnetic forces are caused by relativistic contraction when electrons are moving relative to atomic nuclei. The magnetic force on a moving charge next to a current carrying wire is a result of relativistic motion between electrons and protons. In 1820, Andre Marie Ampere showed that parallel wires having currents in the same direction attract one another. 
To the electrons, the wire contracts slightly, causing the protons of the opposite wire to be locally denser. As the electrons in the opposite wire are moving as well, they do not contract as much. This results in an apparent local imbalance between electrons and protons. The moving electrons in one wire are attracted to the extra protons in the other. The reverse can also be considered. To the static protons frame of reference, the electrons are moving and contracted, resulting in the same imbalance. The electron drift velocity is relatively very slow, on the order of a meter an hour but the force between an electron and proton is so enormous that even at this very slow speed the relativistic contraction causes significant effects. This effect also applies to magnetic particles without current, with current being replaced with electron spin. Topic experimental verifications Any observer co-moving with the observed object cannot measure the object's contraction, because he can judge himself and the object as at rest in the same inertial frame in accordance with the principle of relativity as it was demonstrated by the Troughton–Rankin experiment. So length contraction cannot be measured in the object's rest frame, but only in a frame in which the observed object is in motion. In addition, even in such a non-co-moving frame, direct experimental confirmations of length contraction are hard to achieve, because at the current state of technology, objects of considerable extension cannot be accelerated to relativistic speeds. And the only objects traveling with the speed required are atomic particles, yet whose spatial extensions are too small to allow a direct measurement of contraction. However, there are indirect confirmations of this effect in a non co moving frame. It was the negative result of a famous experiment that required the introduction of length contraction, the Michelson Morley experiment, and later also the Kennedy Thorndike experiment. In special relativity, its explanation is as follows In its rest frame, the interferometer can be regarded as at rest in accordance with the relativity principle, so the propagation time of light is the same in all directions. Although in a frame in which the interferometer is in motion, the transverse beam must traverse a longer, diagonal path with respect to the non-moving frame thus making its travel time longer, the factor by which the longitudinal beam would be delayed by taking times L, C V and L, C plus V for the forward and reverse trips respectively is even longer. Therefore, in the longitudinal direction the interferometer is supposed to be contracted, in order to restore the equality of both travel times in accordance with the negative experimental results. Thus the two-way speed of light remains constant and the round-trip propagation time along perpendicular arms of the interferometer is independent of its motion and orientation. Given the thickness of the atmosphere as measured in Earth's reference frame, muons' extremely short lifespan shouldn't allow them to make the trip to the surface, even at the speed of light, but they do nonetheless. From the Earth reference frame, however, this is made possible only by the muons' time being slowed down by time dilation. However, in the muon's frame, the effect is explained by the atmosphere being contracted, shortening the trip. Heavy ions that are spherical when at rest should assume the form of pancakes or flat disks when traveling nearly at the speed of light. And in fact, the results obtained from particle collisions can only be explained when the increased nucleon density due to length contraction is considered. The ionization ability of electrically charged particles with large relative velocities is higher than expected. In pre-relativistic physics the ability should decrease at high velocities, because the time in which ionizing particles in motion can interact with the electrons of other atoms or molecules is diminished. Though in relativity, the higher than expected ionization ability can be explained by length contraction of the Coulomb field in frames in which the ionizing particles are moving, which increases their electrical field strength normal to the line of motion. In synchrotrons and free electron lasers, relativistic electrons were injected into an undulator, so that synchrotron radiation is generated. In the proper frame of the electrons, the undulator is contracted which leads to an increased radiation frequency. Additionally, to find out the frequency as measured in the laboratory frame, one has to apply the relativistic Doppler effect. So, only with the aid of length contraction and the relativistic Doppler effect, the extremely small wavelength of undulator radiation can be explained. <laughs> Reality of length contraction In 1911 Vladimir Verichok asserted that length contraction is «real» according to Lorentz, while it is «apparent or subjective». According to Einstein, Einstein replied, The author unjustifiably stated a difference of Lorentz's view and that of mine concerning the physical facts. 
The question as to whether length contraction really exists or not is misleading. It doesn't really exist, insofar as it doesn't exist for a comoving observer, though it really exists, i.e. in such a way that it could be demonstrated in principle by physical means by a non-comoving observer. Einstein also argued in that paper, that length contraction is not simply the product of arbitrary definitions concerning the way clock regulations and length measurements are performed. He presented the following thought experiment, let ob and a b be the endpoints of two rods of the same proper length L0, as measured on x and x, respectively. Let them move in opposite directions along the x** axis, considered at rest, at the same speed with respect to it. Endpoints A then meet at point A** and B meet at point B**. Einstein pointed out that length AB is shorter than AB or A B, which can also be demonstrated by bringing one of the rods to rest with respect to that axis. Paradoxes Due to superficial application of the contraction formula some paradoxes can occur. Examples are the latter paradox and Bell's spaceship paradox. However, those paradoxes can simply be solved by a correct application of relativity of simultaneity. Another famous paradox is the Ehrenfest paradox, which proves that the concept of rigid bodies is not compatible with relativity, reducing the applicability of Born rigidity, and showing that for a co-rotating observer the geometry is in fact non-Euclidean. <laughs> <laughs> Visual effects Length contraction refers to measurements of position made at simultaneous times according to a coordinate system. This could suggest that if one could take a picture of a fast-moving object, that the image would show the object contracted in the direction of motion. However, such visual effects are completely different measurements, as such a photograph is taken from a distance, while length contraction can only directly be measured at the exact location of the object's endpoints. It was shown by several authors such as Roger Penrose and James Terrell that moving objects generally do not appear length contracted on a photograph. For instance, for a small angular diameter, a moving sphere remains circular and is rotated. This kind of visual rotation effect is called Penrose-Terrell rotation. <laughs> Derivation Using the Lorentz transformation length contraction can be derived from the Lorentz transformation in several ways, x equals gamma x minus v t t equals gamma t minus v x c2 display style begin aligned x and equals gamma left x Vermont right t and equals gamma left t v x c caret 2 right end aligned. Topic known moving length. In an inertial reference frame S, x one display style x underscore one and x two display style x underscore two shall denote the endpoints of an object in motion in this frame. There, its length l display style l was measured according to the above convention by determining the simultaneous positions of its endpoints at T one equals T two display style T underscore one equals T underscore two. Now the proper length of this object in S shall be calculated by using the Lorentz transformation. Transforming the time coordinates from S into S results in different times, but this is not problematic as the object is at rest in S, where it does not matter when the endpoints are measured. Therefore, the transformation of the spatial coordinates suffices, which gives x one equals gamma x one minus v t one a n d x two equals gamma x two Minus v t two 
Display style x underscore one equals gamma left x underscore one Vermont underscore one right quad mathem and quad x underscore two equals gamma left x underscore two Vermont underscore two right since T one equals T two Display style T underscore one equals T underscore two and by setting L equals x 2 minus x 1 display style l equals x underscore 2 x underscore 1 and l 0 equals x 2 minus x 1 Display style l underscore zero caret equals x underscore two caret x underscore one caret. The proper length in s is given by l zero equals l gamma one. Display style l underscore zero caret equals l c d o t gamma q quad q quad text one. With respect to which the measured length in s is contracted by L equals L zero gamma two display style L equals L underscore zero caret gamma q quad q quad text two. According to the relativity principle, objects that are at rest in S have to be contracted in S as well. By exchanging the above signs and primes symmetrically, it follows L zero equals L gamma three display style L underscore zero equals L c d o t gamma q quad q quad text three. Thus, the contracted length as measured in S is given by L equals L zero gamma four display style L equals L underscore zero gamma q quad q quad text four. Topic: Known proper length. Conversely, if the object rests in S and its proper length is known, the simultaneity of the measurements at the object's endpoints has to be considered in another frame S, as the object constantly changes its position there. Therefore, both spatial and temporal coordinates must be transformed. X one equals gamma x one minus v t 1 a n d x 2 equals gamma x 2 minus v t 2 t 1 equals gamma t1 minus vx1 c2 a n d t2 equals gamma t2 minus vx2 c2 display style begin aligned x underscore 1 caret and equals gamma left x underscore 1 vermont underscore 1 right and quad mathrm and quad and an x underscore 2 caret and equals gamma lef T x underscore two Vermont underscore two right T underscore one carrot and equals gamma left T underscore one VX underscore one C carrot two right and quad mathem and quad and T underscore two carrot and equals gamma left T underscore two VX underscore two C carrot two right end aligned with T one equals T two display style T underscore one equals T underscore two and L zero equals X two minus X one Display style l underscore zero equals x underscore two x underscore one. This results in non-simultaneous differences. Delta x x two minus x one equals gamma l zero delta t t two minus t one equals minus gamma v l zero. 
C two display style begin aligned delta x and equiv x underscore two x underscore one equals gamma l underscore zero delta t and equiv t underscore two t underscore one equals gamma v l underscore zero c caret two end aligned in order to obtain the simultaneous positions of both endpoints. The second endpoint must be advanced by minus delta t display style delta t with the speed minus v display style v of s relative to s. To obtain the length l, display style l, the quantity minus v minus delta t, display style v c d o t delta t must therefore be added to delta x, display style delta x l equals delta x plus v delta t equals gamma l zero minus gamma v two l zero c two equals l zero gamma display style begin aligned l and equals delta x plus v delta t and equals gamma l underscore zero gamma v caret two l underscore zero C carrot two and equals L underscore zero gamma end aligned so the moving length in S is contracted. Likewise, the preceding calculation gives a symmetric result for an object at rest in S L equals L zero gamma display style L equals L underscore zero carrot gamma topic Using time dilation Length contraction can also be derived from time dilation, according to which the rate of a single moving clock indicating its proper time t 0 is lower with respect to two synchronized resting clocks indicating t t Time dilation was experimentally confirmed multiple times and is represented by the relation t equals t 0 gamma display style t equals t underscore 0 c d o t gamma suppose a rod of proper length l 0 display style l underscore 0 at rest in s display style s and a clock at rest in s display style s are moving along each other with speed v display style v since according to the principle of relativity the magnitude of relative velocity is the same in either reference frame the respective travel times of the clock between the rod's endpoints are given by t equals l 0 v display style t equals l underscore 0 v in s display style s and t 0 equals l v display style t underscore 0 equals l v in s display style s thus l Zero equals t v display style l underscore zero equals t v and l equals t zero v display style l equals t underscore zero v by inserting the time dilation formula, the ratio between those lengths is l l Zero equals t zero v t v equals one gamma display style frac l l underscore zero equals frac t underscore zero v t v equals one gamma. Therefore, the length measured in s display style s is given by l equals l 0 gamma display style l equals l underscore 0 gamma so since the clock's travel time across the rod is longer in s display style s than in s display style s time dilation in s display style s 
The rod's length is also longer in s display style s than in s display style s length contraction in s display style s likewise if the clock were at rest in s display style s and the rod in s display style s the above procedure would give l equals l 0 gamma display style l equals l underscore 0 gamma topic geometrical considerations Additional geometrical considerations show, that length contraction can be regarded as a trigonometric phenomenon, with analogy to parallel slices through a cuboid before and after a rotation in E3 This is the Euclidean analog of boosting a cuboid in E1, 2. In the latter case, however, we can interpret the boosted cuboid as the world slab of a moving plate. Image, left, a rotated cuboid in three-dimensional Euclidean space E3. The cross section is longer in the direction of the rotation than it was before the rotation. Right, the world slab of a moving thin plate in Minkowski spacetime with one spatial dimension suppressed E1, 2, which is a boosted cuboid. The cross section is thinner in the direction of the boost than it was before the boost. In both cases, the transverse directions are unaffected and the three planes meeting at each corner of the cuboids are mutually orthogonal in the sense of E1, 2 at right, and in the sense of E3 at left. In special relativity, Poincaré transformations are a class of affine transformations which can be characterized as the transformations between alternative Cartesian coordinate charts on Minkowski spacetime corresponding to alternative states of inertial motion and different choices of an origin. Lorentz transformations are Poincaré transformations which are linear transformations preserve the origin. Lorentz transformations play the same role in Minkowski geometry the Lorentz group forms the isotropy group of the self-isometries of the spacetime which are played by rotations in Euclidean geometry. Indeed, special relativity largely comes down to studying a kind of nonuclidean trigonometry in Minkowski spacetime, as suggested by the following table. <laughs> 